Hello, this is Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob, and today I've got the pleasure to be talking about a Dell PowerEdge R640. This is usually the workhorse. This is the server that I use the most in uh, my clients and that I recommend. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a great um, follow-up model to the R630 before that and the R620 before that. Um, basically, let me take, take you a look here at uh, some of the things. First of all, you'll notice it's branded Dell EMC. This model uh, has a two a dual power supply. It also has a dual CPU. It can go up to 28 cores per CPU. Of course, depending on when you're listening to this, the different Intel processors will range. They've got the silver, the gold, and the platinum. And uh, you can really get uh, a lot of bang out of this, a lot of power. Uh, Memory-wise, you'll see you can go up to three terabytes. And as I'll show you in a moment, when we look inside, there's lots of slots. You got 24 RAM slots. They're DDR4 and um, they are ECC memory, of course, since this is a server enterprise class machine. So the first thing is uh, the front bezel. I really like the fact that it's got this LCD and to remove it, I'll show you this, you take it out and the LCD is actually built into a little bracket in the front. So that's really nice. This particular model, as you can tell, has eight bays for two and a half dri uh, inch drives. These could be, of course, SSD drives, both in the SAS or, or SATA. And right now I've got some basically spacers or things to block off the holes. Once you have drives, they basically come out quite easily. Now, if you're wondering about serial number and information, they have always had this, this little pull-out tab and gives you the serial number. If you have purchased this with an iDRAC, the iDRAC is a subsystem built into it. It's basically like a smaller computer, uh, like it's based on Linux probably. And what it does, it allows you to control things remotely. So you can do things like reboot, update uh, firmware, uh, take control so you can take a look at the what would be transmitted to, off to the monitor. It allows you basically to service these things without being physically on location. It's very important. Now the reason I bring iDRAC up at this moment is in the back of this little thing with the uh, serial number is a password, username and password, printed on the back for this particular machine. This is done at the factory. And when you purchase this, it's a check mark that you select to have them print out this label. Now let's take a quick look at what is available. From the front, I've mentioned the, the spaces for the drives. In the front, you do have both for a, let me see if I can see it, the uh, exit here for it's basically VGA for a monitor in case you need to, if you've got a rack and you need to quickly uh, see something, you can go ahead and plug that in. And of course you do have a USB port on the other end. The power button is extremely small. If you haven't seen one of those, it is next to the USB and you basically have to go and press on it. This is done on purpose so that you have less, you're less likely to press on the on off button by accident. Now let's spin this around. Let's take a quick look at the back. So what we've got here is pretty typical of a server. First off, you've got dual power supplies. These are in this particular case, they are 750 watt. You can go higher than that. Um, the idea of having two obviously is if one fails, the other one continues to function. So your server will survive a failure of one of these, depending on the load, of course. Um, and they're quite easy to put in and out, as you just saw. Do that, it clicks, it's in. All you need to do is add the power cord. This will turn green, and you're up and running. The rest, you'll notice lots and lots of network ports on here. Uh, this is, they're all configurable. When you purchase this, you decide if you want to have some copper if you want to have fiber uh, in this case what we have is two 10 uh, gigabit ports and two one gigabit ports we have an optional card which i'll show you when i open this 
Right now we've got SFP+, plus, uh, which allows us to have fiber. We could also use an adapter and have additional 10G functionality. Bottom here is actually the iDRAC, the very bottom port. So that's the iDRAC system. So that's what is going to allow you to provide remote support for this machine. And of course you do have the VGA. There's a serial port, which most of us will no longer use. You've got a couple of USB ports. So if you're keeping track, we had one in the front, there's two in the back, and as you'll see later, there is one inside. And that's a bit of a wrap up. Um, so let's take a quick look at what the inside looks like. Quite easy to remove. Of course, in a rack environment, these would be on rails. So here we have a brand new machine. And first off, you've got the expandability. So let's take a quick look. You'll see how easy it is to remove the riser card. In our case, we have, as I mentioned, an Intel network interface card, which allows you to get fiber on there. And if you, so the riser could be changed out and put different cards, put them in, it's quite simple. You simply align it and it goes right back in. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, so that worked out pretty well. Um, the other card is actually here. You've got these, everything that's blue indicates that you can move things, you know, press things. And so it's quite simple to find out what's supposed to be moving as opposed to what's bolted or soldered in here. So the card is obviously being protected and that was our network card here. Uh, the rest, we've got the power supplies. I had mentioned earlier there was another USB port inside of the server. It is actually located right here behind the power supply. I do have a little USB drive in here. And why would you have this inside a machine, in case you're wondering? This will actually allow you to uh, boot uh, an operating system, for example. In this case, I use a lot of VMware. And so the ESXi 6.7 boot is off of here. I place it in there and from this moment forward I can boot on this. When the version 7, um, I want to upgrade to version 7, I could replace this, put version 7, put it in. This way it allows me to have multiple test environments. It's a lot of people are using these uh, to do the initial booting of the server. Let me just put this back in here. A little tricky to put back in here just because of where it's located. There we go. Next we have the what they call a perk RAID controller and you see here that it has a battery so the battery is so it doesn't lose data in case of a power failure and it's got the heatsink on top of it. This actually this model um, is the actually has eight gigs of caching on it so it's quite powerful and this of course connects back to this wire all the way back to the front to their drive bays. So all the disks are connected back to that RAID controller. I'm hoping you know what RAID is and that's what the technology that allows you uh, basically to survive the failure of a drive or multiple drives depending on the setup and configuration you've done. Now to the heart of the system we have the two processors and this is where they'll put the silver, gold, platinum Intel processors and then all of the slots here the black ones being the empty ones all the slots are basically for memory. Let me see if I can this out. Here we go. Here we go. So and again these are so the black ones are basically just spacers at this point they're literally just pieces of plastic and all this memory again is DDR4, ECC RAM. In my case, they're 32 gigs. So it's quite easy to put in. And of course, in case you haven't seen one of these, the back, and I'll show you later, the back of the. Let me put this back in. There we go. 
um, the, the back of the uh, cover actually has a diagram as to what memory to put in when you've got one processor, two processors, in which order to put them in. They are numbered. Next, what we have is these fans. These are high performance fans. You have that option when you purchase this server. The high performance fans uh, obviously blow a lot of additional air. The whole point here is to keep this well ventilated. So these will push the air to the words the back. As you can tell, everything is aligned with the fans. I don't know if you can see the fins on the processor. So these fins here really is to disperse the heat. So what you've got is these little tunnels that will happen in between the fins to cool it down and also for the RAM. So you've got the air flowing in this direction. So last but not least, I guess what I can show you is the inside of the cover. And the whole point is to show you that you've got the instructions here uh, related to multiple functions. They'll tell you about the, you know, the rear view and so forth. And most importantly is the memory information. Of course, you can't find all of this online. And um, yeah, I mean, this is how to uh, install and so forth. This is useful really just when you're setting it up. So, if you've enjoyed this little walkthrough of an R640, this is going to be used uh, in our lab for a few weeks uh, for the testing with uh, migrations from the 6.7 of VMware to version 7. And we're going to do some uh, high availability tests uh, with other brands such as QNAP. And that's it. Thanks to all the multiple network cards, we'll be able to do uh, lots of different scenarios. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please, please help us out, subscribe, and give us just a thumbs up if you appreciated and enjoyed this video. This is Bob Pellerin. Thank you for watching.